let's see. Can Nigma pull it back together? Or, or Ivy going to be able to get it? The, the, the two are. I mean, it's hard to say who the mental game belongs to in this one. Um, it's got to be scary for Nigma to be kind of staring down the barrel of a 2 0 for the hands of Ivy, right? Like, these guys, you know. They're, they're not the best team in the division, most would say. Uh, we're not expecting them to be at any rate, so the fact that they're uh, looking to take down Nigna here is, is pretty crazy. There's going to be a bit of nerves there, but at the same time, Ivy have also got to be the case of like, you know, oh my goodness, we don't let it get in your heads that we're about to possibly threaten Nigma here, you know? Don't, don't let yourselves get too kind of swept away with the concept and lose the mechanics in the process. Yeah, again, for Ivy, they were the team that got eliminated last tour. They had to re-qualify under a pretty much a whole new roster. They were the, the German national team, basically, with uh, Mobile, yeah, Gem, and, and Q. So as soon as they all kind of left, the identity of the team changed. You got ITB's ex-carry, Otega. Like, there was a lot of rework happening for Ivy. A lot of Div2 mainstay names, but still. To reform, take a first game off Nigma. Impressive stuff. Two runes so far, three runes. Going the way of wow, we free win. Arrow also come down to uh, onto MC, and that actually might be first blood going their way as well. Ivy, great start from them as they will run him down and give the last hit to Otka in the process. So great start from this battle as well. Look at him already queuing up this radiance. He's like, hell yeah! All right, good start. <laughs> Online, <laughs> much no gold until my radiance now. I'm basically there. Yeah, this lane won't be fun for Nigma. When I'm thinking of Nigma and Techies, a lot of chip damage, you throw in some aphotic shields, plus an undying to get in front of you. A taker should be absolute free farm, and that's when Nigma are going to look towards the Bloodseeker lane, the aggression that we mentioned during the draft, and also Mikey in quite an even mid matchup to try and find the advantages because this off lane from Nigma, you get what you're given, you hope to get to a Midas relatively quick, and then you play the, the game based on what your team can achieve. Yeah. Yeah, and in this mid lane, of course, the question is who is going to thrive better in this relatively even matchup, you know? Because last time it was a bit skewed. Obviously, Huskar has an advantage over Void Spirit every single time. So you were more looking to see how could Moonlight survive. And doing that kind of gameplay, he look, looked really good. But now the scores are even, how will they each perform? <laughs> So far, Mikey's putting on a bit of a clinic here, right? Seven for three on the Ember Spirit to the one and four of the Void Spirit. Completely out CSing it. He shoved it under the lane, under the tower. Sorry, Moonlight wasn't really able to keep up with that CS. So, yeah, Mikey so far oh. crushing it in the mid lane. Yeah, heavy damage dealt onto GH, but Mind Control is the one in real trouble here. It's Otika going to be able to get himself yet another kill, and the shield comes down to stop the Sticky Bomb doing too much damage to them and taking him down. So, another kill going in this top lane to the Abaddon. Great start from him. Damage control. I'm going to say it so many times. Maybe we don't really see lane putting too much uh, from offlaners, but maybe this could be the lane that you do it because you. are MC is just going to get rack up like two, three deaths. Already two. I'd be. I expect him to have maybe three deaths by the end of this laning phase. Like mm. that's how rough it's going to be. Maybe even four if yeah. the voice where it rotates in. That could be rough. Stark difference from last game then, as uh, my control is obviously the, the big bad boss off the last game, at least for the first kind of 20, 25 minutes. But yeah, constantly getting his strength stolen. I, I did like how um, GH and Mind Control tried to go really aggressive the moment Mind Control was back. They were like, okay, you know, I've still got, I've still got a bit of strength at the moment. I'm, uh, I'm a big boy. Because of, it's mainly because of Undying, right? He has no resources. He just shipped out another Mango and a Clarity, but he kind of needs to sit back, right? It's, the Clarity is going to be running for 20 or so seconds. Once that's up, you get the Lotus Orb. Uh, Lotus Orb? The Lotus wow. Flower as well. Silence. Right. And then you go for it. I mean, I think three kills, yeah, then. They're having a great time to survive in this laning phase. Yeah, bottom Yuma went to go and get the uh, Lotus, and they just kind of abused the fact that uh, the Bloodseeker wasn't able to instantly smack him and land a cheeky little arrow. It's uh, never a nice one to catch the Silencer. Usually going to seal your fate. Mikey and Moonlight, both very low in the middle lane, but both with pretty much all their spells on cooldown. They've been, they've been doing a bit of trading. Now bottling up. But yeah, still going pretty well for Mikey, has to be said. It's yep. good stuff. Has caught up though on Moonlight. Four creeps yeah. are coming into the tower, so if he gets all of them. Okay, gets one denied off. But still, we're only. 
<laughs> oh god, uh, why am I looking at here? <laughs> Look away, He could have he could have been like two CS down, but he missed it and now he's like five CS down, so yeah, Moonlight not able to get the perfect CS on mid. And for Ivy, I would like to see maybe that one rotation in to help offset this a little bit, or at least rune secure. Moonlight's being aggressive here. He's being very aggressive, actually. He's got Mikey pretty low. Mikey, he's got the fairy fire still, but nothing left after this. No magic sticks available. But Moonlight cannot really take many tower hits here. Now the water runes will spawn and give them a chance to regen themselves up. But they're getting down and dirty in the middle lane, and it is a pleasure to watch. I mean, fair play. I, I, I love the fact that Moonlight is always going for it. And now, level five, out leveling Ember, even though Ember had such a great start. So, you know, props to Moonlight for. Yeah. Be able to kind of recover his lane a little bit here. Definitely, definitely, yeah. So uh, that one lane which was going pretty well for Nigma is uh, now looking to be uh, evened out somewhat. But that said, uh, actually down at bottom, um, they did get the kill onto the Silencer, but Mix is still having a pretty tough time on this Dying Magnus. Yeah. Because the lane's in, you now get to see Rube make some stacks in the Dire Triangle. So now double stacks available. I'd expect with this logic that Rue should also be looking to go bot rune for the con contest. Now, every time I look at mid, it's always just Mikey and Moonlight just non-stop just throwing spells on each other. <laughs> yeah. Mikey's used his entire load, got one slight left, but Ooh, Moonlight yeah. wishes he was six there, yeah. yeah. Halfway to level six, but they're both mirroring in XP, so this wave is so crucial. Whoever gets the that extra deny, that extra little bit of something, both heroes will have kill threat on each other if they hit six first. This, is hype. this has been a hype mid lane, oh. honestly. Oh, oh, the rotation, but in. wait. Yeah, Rue might have uh, bitten off a bit more than he could chew, and he what certainly did. did. Mikey's just going to cut him down. Ah, oh, that's Our what? hype mid lane was ruined. It was an honest matchup, and then Rue comes in, <laughs> thinks he's going to get a solo kill, kill off yeah. Mikey, but no. Disgusting. With a sand play, in Rue. the eyes, you know. It's... <laughs> I mean... Good stuff from Mikey there. It helps that he's gone for the free point in Flame Guard, able to soak up a little bit of that damage that Rue was presenting. And then the regen rune for Mikey! Absolutely blessed with the kill and a regen. That's why he gets to rank one. Such RNG. <laughs> yeah, RNG. C, C, and C have basically monopolized rune spawns and ro support rotations, but Mikey, he's trying to contest that luck. Yep. Of course, you, you control RNG by, you know, making... Uh, oh, he's utilizing level 6 here as well, actually, and just trying to put a lot of pressure. But uh, Mikey, yeah, he's going to get it. There you go. Easy be easy. Rue missing the arrow. And, uh, yeah, it's just going to be another kill. Oh, man. If Moonlight doesn't say anything to Rue here, then he is a saint. He is he's a, he's a pious man who could never be tilted by anything. Yeah, this entire laning phase has crumbled. I like the fact that we've actually just locked onto the mid lane, you know? Like, sometimes you bounce around the lanes and stuff, but the whole narrative of this game potentially could have been what we saw. Yeah. Which is nice. It is very easy for us, as they do cut down Kuro here a little bit, as uh, Rue's like, please, uh, you know, I'll, I, I denied the catapult. I'll, I'll set up this kill for Kuro. I'm sorry. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Don't it's worry too about late. It. <laughs> Damage is done. The tower sitting at 257 HP. Like yeah. this mid lane matchup is not meant to be like this. But anyways, let's now look towards MC. He started the lane not and two, gave away the first bud, respawned and died. But he picked up the vanguard, and he got to just keep skipping ways behind tower. That is the good thing about Doom, is when the game gets difficult, if there isn't a support to chase you down and some like monkey or slark style mobility hero that can join that fight, you yeah. can just park yourself behind the tower and just non-stop push out the creep waves. Yeah, yeah, for sure. As uh, <laughs> fighting does continue in the middle lane. I, I do like how um, our, our lovely observer web pass was trying to look to the other lanes being like, can we, can we talk about something else? You were just like, no, we, we don't. I'm trying my best, Tim. I'm also trying to like, now we talk about at least change the topic. Right. Yeah. And actually, there is some fighting going on on the top side here. Odika laying down some uh, heavy harassment. In fact, might be a bit more than harassment here. As uh, he's Can't just blasting beat. away. But mind control is like, yeah, okay, peace out. It's going to take you like three rounds of Avernus to actually bring me down. See ya. And um, yeah, farm wise, very even. I think the only difference here is the fact that Abaddon did get a couple kills, pushing his net worth higher than the Bloodseeker, but CS is mirrored. Game is quite stable from both teams. And now Nigma, they see how low mid tier one is. You bring a couple supports and you're going to be able to take it. Will they get denied though? 
Ooh, jumping on a Moonlight, okay. actually. He's, he's trying to mess with them here, and that does allow them to get the deny, but is it going to cost him anything as the explosion comes in just about in time? Moonlight, though, he's just fighting into Mikey, but he's so low on HP, and is actually just going to drop. Rue trying to fit his job here onto Mikey. Mikey, though, bottling up inside the tree lines. He's going to be healthy enough, and now Yuma comes running on in as they charge onto Jim Vincento. Vincento's going to fall. Rupture out onto the Murano, who just TPs away. That old Dota classic. If ruptured, TP. Yeah, Yuma, he thought the, the fight would break out a little bit kind of more explosively from Ivy, especially in the previous game. Ivy reacted heavily with numbers. He tries to make the preemptive TP. Doesn't work out. Luckily, he's able to run back bottom quite quickly. But Enigma showcasing the, the, the fight that they can bring with their supports. If they bring the heroes here, they're going to get the kills. And yeah, Mikey, because he went for the Flame Guard build, easily soaking up the, the limited damage that Ivy have. Undying yeah. doesn't really provide much in the k kills. Sure, you got three point star storm, but it's just eaten up by this flame guard with ease. So, Mikey really is able to keep looking to, to move forward in this game. Yeah, and they so nearly brought Mikey down there, actually. Like, the Void Spirit almost finished the job, but then he just ends up ticking out to the techies' damage and the uh, flame guard burn. It, it could have been great, but it wasn't. And now they see Moonlight again here. GH comes flying, flying in upon him, forcing him to astral step away. Rune control is so pivotal in these games. Mikey's just getting every rune. He's got the regen, now he's got an arcane. Meanwhile, Super Saw will take a cheaper to, to the bot lane, trying to progress the map a little bit. He's just, he's just scared of the team. He's actually just going to get popped. Oh, oh, it happens. What's yeah, happening just going top? For, a, for a little swim down the river, caught out. Meanwhile, they'll drop the tombstone just to protect the top tower, but uh, Mikey, he's looking at Moonlight here, but uh, places the remnant defensively, knowing that he might need to uh, bail on this one if things get spicy. You can see Nickma trying to break down this map a little bit, but this is going to be the benefit of having this Abaddon. As soon as he kind of presents himself in the fight, Doom can't Doom anyone because now it's like, ah, oh, he's just going to get shielded. They can maybe disengage. And if you Doom the Abaddon, in the early game at least, a dying voice, but these heroes will thrive because like, they, they're not under threat anymore. Um, yeah. So it's kind of this balancing act between bringing in numbers to, to prevent the fight, but also if Mikey turns up with his you know, bloody arcane rune slight spam, then probably have to disengage as well. Yeah, yeah, we've also seen nothing really come out of mind control or from uh, from Mick uh, and Mix at the moment. You know, they've both been pretty quiet, so no big dooms coming out, no big RPs coming out. Still waiting for uh, for that big moment. What's the level game saying? We've got still yet to hit six on either supports on Nigma, whilst Ivy, of course, happily hitting the XP on the supports. Now Moonlight plus JM are smoked up together. Are going to get nothing from this. Yeah, running into an empty jungle. If anyone was to write some sad song birds, ballads about Dota, that would be one of the tracks. I mean... Loader did showcase his music talents with his uh, creep song the other month. Was yeah, Loki a yeah, banger, to be fair? Was it, Ned? Yeah. You should listen to it. It's very good. I, I will. I will. MC has a Midas, but on Courier. Can't TP because Rue holding the arrow. Yeah, does Mind Control get out of this one? I feel like the no. answer is no, and I'm correct. God, I'm smart. Meanwhile, they also lose an Undying elsewhere on the map, but uh, pretty good trade if you're, uh, if you're an Ivy fan. This game, it's it's very even in the fact that neither team's are really kind of pushing the limits. They're not trying to break the game post laning phase. Mikey's doing a pretty good job at walking around and kind of being a nuisance, but he's not taking away stacks, of course. He's not doing anything too crazy. And for Nigma, I am interested to see when they decide to kind of turn up the pace on their lineup. Most likely, it will be the BKB timings that we see in a roundabout six or seven minutes time oh my god <laughs> shield just respawns rune. to mid and dies yeah 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 you tp mid and then mikey just pops a shield rune you're like uh, uh, all right buddy all right okay he has two separate shield bars above him and uh it's terrifying don't worry guys we just need to eat through his bajillion hp oh yeah. level three decay him don't worry guys all good That'll do it. Yeah. This game is all about efficiency. It's Doom farming up stacks. You've got Mag as well farming up some stacks from the Ancients. Yeah. I mean, and everyone just farming. 
Yeah, Yuma and Mind Control are actually farming together. Like, yeah. <laughs> Reach peak efficiency by farming together. And then, okay. Right. Has the Radiance complete now? Abaddon are we? ready to take off in this game and Good start Lord. hitting creeps. He's a big boy, Mr. Abaddon. He is uh, he is pretty damn far ahead, actually, now that we look at it. Um, as, as Kuro gets gets chased off. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing here, Kuro? This isn't the place for you. Helping Mikey get a kill, perhaps? Sure. But uh, trading his life for it? Definitely. Yes, yeah, sir. That's one of those optimistic little moves there from Nigma. They have the global available, so they're going to poke their heads. But the fact that they brought four heroes over there, you've got to take it as a win. The resources for Ivy just to cut off a little, little silence of rough and damn. As soon as he shows, Mikey just has a vendetta against him. Maybe the tips from the previous game, Mikey's just kind of, you know, paying back. Yeah, I, I don't think Mikey just He's wants to slide it again. Yet. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually looking at Moonlight here. Moonlight does have himself the Astral Step, so... Yeah, gotta be... Into a DD there, rune. Mikey. Oh my god, oh, Mikey, cool. you gotta stop getting the runes, boss. Give one to Ivy. You know, sharing is caring. Ivy has no cares. Sorry, Mikey has no cares. I mean, Ivy needs to have oh, no cares rune. about this aggression. The Taker's getting uh, ruptured up in the top lane whilst Marana's dying. Has oh, no okay. available, so should be relatively fine. Jim. Okay. Moonlight also stunning completely. <laughs> You're not the one that's ruptured, but uh, he was just in the trees waiting for the moment to pop, but didn't realize he could actually be seen there. So that's a little unfortunate. Getting caught with his pants down a bit. We've all been there. See mind control, but I feel like a jump here would be very questionable considering there's a lot of heroes wrapping around the tower. Okay, this double damage no. room still there, by the way. Getting so much value out of it as it just about times away, but. Yeah, two and a half kills with that uh, DD rune. You love to see it, but mind control has been left behind a little bit. TP out though, and nothing to cancel. I was so do? scared for this undying. Oh, rip me. Oh, just do me. I mean, there's no ult. Uh, oh, I mean, there is an ult, but yeah, I thought I used it. Oh, well. that's an yeah. awkward doom then. So did he. <laughs> so did he. Yeah. I mean, with all the shenanigans that were happening there, you know, I guess he was just like, oh, yeah, he's, he's definitely a fatty. <laughs> Yeah, I did use the barrage. Chich, baby Chich. Oh, oh, GH, gamer. Oh, no, they kill the bombs. They oh, kill gamer. the bombs. And now, in fact, it might be gamer GH who is getting gamered as uh, he does get cut down eventually. Uh, it could have been It could have been great. I think it's worth it to the attempt there, but unfortunately, it just makes the fire burn even brighter. I mean, this is bad. No, it's such a deceptively low cooldown, right? 70 seconds for when it gets popped. If a fight even gets dragged out, you know, smidged and suddenly boop, it's back up again. And that's exactly what happened there. MC just optimistically throwing the doom down and having a little bit of mistiming. For Ivy, I like the fact that they're kind of half ignoring this aggression. Sure, Undying might die two or three times, right? But Mixer AFK farms one side of the map. He's now got Vanguard Harpoon in a, quite a chaotic game where Nigma was forcing the, the narrative quite a lot. He is securing his own game. Same thing with Zabad. Sure, he's been at the forefront of of the Nigma aggression, but he's still happily at top net worth, and I expect this to happen so many times for this Undying. Like, this monster kill from Mikey is just a monster kill of him killing Undying. It's just... <laughs> it's just a, such a one-sided affair. Yeah, but for the bigger the picture of the, the game, it's just Undying times seven. Yeah, it, 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 it's going to be like that. But for the, for the bigger picture of the game, Ivy do need to dodge this, and then make sure when they start taking the fights, it's that... We're jumping in with the voice, Brit, or the Abaddon. Mag follow-ups after. Even sacrifice the Undying, because Tombstone vision in this game is going to be clutch. One high ground Tombstone, just to scout out where this Doom is, prevent that Doom coming in cleanly. Ivy should be confident. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, another game where we're looking at the ultimates quite a lot, but... Uh, Moonlight, he's actually been able to find mind control here. He doesn't really have any teammates. Oh, yes, he does actually as he comes flying in from the sidelines there. <laughs> Hello, Mixer. And uh, yeah, the cavalry does arrive in style nonetheless. All right, that's that's a pretty big deal. I mean, this Abaddon is just not being addressed. He's, he's having a great time. They are now attempting to address the Abaddon and have failed to do so. So he remains unaddressed. Yeah, level two now, so 10 seconds left on the ultimate, but they know the ultimate's not available, so Mikey is trying to do something, but Abaddon walks south, he goes north, the 50-50, lost out on the opportunity. 
Yeah. BKB is complete on Numa now. This is the window that I was mentioning for Nick, but this is probably going to be one of their main timings to be aggressive. Sure, MC, of course, with the Doom build going for Octarine. It is meta. We're not going to see some double BKB timing, but BKB on the Bloodseeker. Ember going with a super high damage, Shard, Kaya, Maelstrom build. Like, if Ivy can survive this, the next timing for Nygma is going to be another five, six minutes after that. Nygma are smoked up, though. Yuma, there he goes. Immediate rupture out onto the Magnus. Could be a really good target here, but Nick Mixer, he's still got so much health. He's just running himself away, moving into the trees, TPing out. It's going to get cancelled for this kill. It will belong to them. And the explosion goes off, meaning it belongs to GH. Those are the fireworks as the rest of Ivy get themselves away. Yeah, nice uh, ward place there by Nygma. I think if he didn't place the ward, it would have been that awkward. Is he there? Is he not? Maybe you slight chains in a different location, so... Good stuff from Nygma to really yeah. ensure that they lock down the Magnus. Clean, clean. And that's what it's all about as well, you know, especially when you're going for these um, plays where you're kind of grouped up as like four. A Magnus kill is usually going to be worth it, but the faster you can make it, the more efficient it is, the more gold you're going to be able to get out of the map post of that, and uh, the bigger advantage you'll make of his death cooldown. So. I'm just hyped for the first global fight, let's be real. Like, we've, we've, we've not really seen any big scuffles from Nygma. It's been a lot of Mikey and the boys posturing. A lot of farm happening behind, but oh, it's nearly, I'd argue, 19,000 net worth from Nygma that we've not seen presented in the game, really. Combine the Doom and the Bloodseeker together, collectively just kind of been hitting <laughs> creeps. So okay. there's about, uh, like... about a 17k gold lead right now for Ivy. Um, <laughs> insane stuff seeing here at the 20-minute mark. I'm, I'm, I, think, I think I'm following, but <laughs> you're cooking something up here. Oh, poor chair, man. He's getting absolutely bloody cooked really? in this game. Look at him. Oh, Dude, oh, these oh, jukes are the high. Jukes. Oh, come on. Happy feet. <laughs> Someone already did this though earlier on. They know you're here, my friend. All right. Doom used to kill off the undying. I mean, he's like, yeah, that's funny. Oh, wow. They're even going to go for the uh, the tombstone as well. Oh, yeah. All oh, the gold for Midas. Oh, go Midas something. Oh, the catapult gets Midas as well. So much money. Hmm, I feel like Ivy, they probably won't utilize this window too heavily. Void Spirit wants most likely Manta before he enters the big fray, because then he can deal with the silence. Ah, rupture Roo. out onto Roo. See you later. TP away. And now Humor is kind of sitting here, but I want to get this PKB charge out of him, I think. Or the global. That works too. They wanted something and they got something. On cooldown for two minutes. I think that's probably the better trade. If he uses the BKB, then suddenly Mag's there using RP. Globaling after the fact, it could have been a disaster using both both of those key components of the draft. So, okay, Ivy, they're they're poking quite a lot. They are this is slowly probably. just using up the resources. Yeah, we have we have moved past poking territory. Mixer, uh, he, he wants to do a little bit more than poke MC. In fact, he wants to RP him. You too, my little buddy. Pause five. I'm gonna RP you. No questions asked. But now Enigma, they're coming in for a bit of revenge here. Yuma, he has to be careful on how he takes it. He doesn't have the most health, so he just needs to get a kill and heal himself up. But the Magnus gets out. Moonlight, he's not gonna be so lucky. He will get fought down. And Mikey's godlike, by the way. Low key godlike. It's just like, yeah, the most abnormal godlike Ember game I've ever seen. It's like, he is getting kills, but we've just seen him kill JM so many times that I'm like, I'm now numb <laughs> to him getting kills. Yeah, yeah. I, like, they have five deaths on the Undying. I'm pretty sure four of those were to the uh, Ember Spirit, so... Yeah, strange godlike, but good godlike nonetheless. We had a rampage last game, we'll get a godlike this game. Is that the curse of Nygma? Ho hopefully not, but we'll see what happens in this one. I can I can see why Ivy is hesitant to make the plays though. They are relatively close to Manta on both Abaddon and the Void Spirit, and that will just give them all new ways to take the fight. And for this Ember, he's gone for this like Gleipnir build, relatively tanky, but if they aren't able to hit that one arrow on him, it might be enough, especially if you get the silence from the Curse of Virtus on Abaddon. Yeah, so no I way is it on one side of the fair. Yeah, yeah. I like the way that um, GH was placing proximity mines out behind Mikey as he went forward there, and then he knows that, you know, he's always got a safe path to retreat towards Mikey. They're probably not going to want to chase into a minefield. Techies is very good at dealing with blink initiators because you just put like three mines on top of you 
and then as soon as they jump on top, insta die. I played against a voice for it yesterday. I put five, like four mines around me, stood in the center, fake AFK. He jumped on top, insta died. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I need to make the clip actually. I need to go back and uh, go back into the game for that one. But it's why this hero is so good. Not only do you give vision for smoke movements and vision to see where Roshan respawns, you're also just annoying where it's like ah, at any minute if i blink incorrectly and then can't right click off the mines half hp fights practically over moonlight does get spotted but he's got the manta oh that's actually a little close there if mikey was able to connect with that glide near then uh yeah could have been some trouble for the void spirit <laughs> ivy moonlight shadowed themselves are they going to do anything else with this or they got blinked no, just on the retreat. Yeah. Like to see them try something. Yeah, oh, smoked up. They, they see Yuma. Room. He's currently hugging the Observer Ward. Straight in with the RP, but straight in with the global. They're there with the response. The BKB comes out from Yuma. They're still hammering away into him. Can they finish him off as a question? As the jump in from GH is there. They will not kill him off. Yuma survives on about 40 HP. TP out from Moonlight as he leaves Mixer behind. Great reactions coming out from the Silencer as he saves Yuma's life and he earns a tip for his efforts. And of course, Jim Fusento dies <laughs> to the Ever Spirit again. Numb to it, no man, I tell you. Numb. <laughs> just elsewhere on the map and that's where the science of pick feels good right for for Nygma. it's bloodseekers getting jumped through all this like quick pace stuff but there isn't the perfect cc on top so he's able to bkb cover by the global yeah just nice stuff from uh from Nygma there to recover but i would argue time will go against Nygma because the next time that engagement occurs one more item will be in wow. play the bkb will be online the something will be there to then kill him off like nullify will delete bloodseeker from this game nullify on this yeah. void spirit you then suddenly can't blood rage with the attack speed and pump out the damage so enigma they need to be mindful that sure they've stabilized this game a bit but they need to start progressing the map otherwise game yeah, one can occur and look at top lane again look at little old roshan, look at roshan. they're so good yeah. at doing this so good two games in a row now i feel like their ability to identify when to go rush due to some misusage of spells or at least a fight occurring just gives ivy this like breathing room that you just don't expect from other teams and you could argue maybe it's nigma's job not doing very well at understanding the roshan timings of their opponents but in so far in this series ivy have just one up them yeah yeah when it comes to roshan control ivy have been the better team and there is uh there is no argument there i don't think nigma making their way down i think gonna try and go for the tormentor here as well wow this is uh, really rubbing salt in the wound. I mean, it's going to bring Moonlight down to about half HP. He's the one of the agents, but immediately just going on to Magnus. Magnus, no hesitation just to throw down the RP, but he is going to be losing his life here. And it looks like Jim Vincenzo is also going to fall. And Mikey says, excuse me, that is my kill. And quickly <laughs> scoops it up. I'm just, I don't even want to see the scoreboard anymore. What is it, like seven kills now? Yeah, seven deaths. Six, I think, are to Ember at least. Six are to Ember, yeah. That's by my count. That's my guesstimate. 11 0 and 4 on this Ember Spirit. Cool and calmly just progressing his own little game. And yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a cautious kitty. I don't want to just get rid of your Aegis just like this. And those explosions are pretty damn scary. And now he's got the thirst upon him. Mikey, he's going to keep giving chase he here. He needs to dodge this. There he is. Okay, nice he did light. not want to give yeah. away the Aegis in that capacity. For Ivy, yeah. as soon as they saw the rupture on the mag, it was okay. Use what you can, disengage, we'll then try and reset and get ourselves a better position. Really nice stuff from Nygma there to do that wraparound. They didn't really have too much vision, it was more just uh, they go for Tormentor. They're going to naturally be low HP due to the fact you're doing Tormentor. Yeah. So even when with the Aegis, they knew to try and make the play, but still pretty awkward. Yet to see Yuma really enter the game. 1 0 and 4. Quite a quiet game from himself. Of course, he's hit plenty of creeps. Sitting quite nicely on the net worth, but... Yeah, that, that big creep impact as GH gets sucked in, but again, the ultimate coming out from Kuro, and there's two heroes just locked in together here. Mixer's falling and Moonlight to follow. First Aegis is gone, and Nigma, they are ready for round number two, and uh, I don't think Ivy are. Nope, they're just going to accept the fact that Moonlight is lost, and they're going to move on with life. Yeah, I mean, you, you talk about the Lutzika not getting involved, but honestly, like... Artica's not really been having a huge impact on these fights either. That is very true. He has 18,000 gold and he's yeah, 
got a worse looking squad than the Bloodseeker. This really does feel like a game of like the off, like, maybe like the mids making a lot of the moves and then everyone else just kind of following up behind. Yeah. And at some point it's going to break out and maybe that's the silver lining for Ivy. They're like, okay, don't worry guys. We're going to hit this one item on Abaddon and he's going to do it. There's no doom. So I'd like to see Ivy try and make some type of forward play now. You farm plenty long enough. You have ways to dispel global. There's no doom. There's no rupture. I, I they need to make a time, uh, make a move. If there's ever a window, it is right now. Unless you want to wait for the butterfly on Abaddon, which he's put his quick buy. More than not a fire. Yeah, I mean, he's just putting everything there. Wait, what's he? They're running into what? GH. Helm of Fire and Will Quarter stuff. What is? Ah, disassemble uh, radiance by butterfly by oh. another fire. There we go. Oh. Look at that. Ready? Three, two, one. Bada bing. Oh, Bada boom. Look at pull pull two items out of nowhere. In my opinion. All right, Why this is the amazing. time to go then. Yeah. Why me? And here, here we go. Just throwing everything on the techies. All right. That's that's one. Mixer hunting for kill number two. But is he gonna find it? Kuro is in the lane. Oh, my kids are double damage. That's cool. We're not saying you particularly want to fight it too. And because <laughs> just like screw it, we'll take the towers. He got the tier one. Incredibly yeah. strong now. Blimey. Converting one item into two big ticket items. Bloodseeker can't do that one v one duel. Sure, there's a lot of other damage types you can bring, but. Ivy need to follow Zabadden around the map, and wherever he goes, you go. Yeah, yeah, hell of a timing he's just hit, and Ivy needs to make the most out of this so that they can. Still There's no Doom. Roshan to play around anymore, so more just going to be map shenanigans, but... Yeah, and I feel like Doom is going to be Nygma's crutch in this game. Like, if you want to get through it, you need to find the real Abaddon outside of his Manta, and make sure he's doomed off. Kill everyone else, and then go back. Treat it kind of like a scuffed Medusa. Where he doesn't have additional range and this insane like HP pool, but treat him like a scuff Medusa, the raid boss that you want to leave to the end. Yes, <laughs> it's a comparison, and I see the logic. <laughs> Mikey, meanwhile, coming to claim his uh, hourly kill on uh, Jim, but will be denied it this time. Wow, if that's not a sign of the game changing pace, then I don't know what is. He's strong enough. He's tanky enough. He gets away. Meanwhile, Global Science getting used as Mixer tries to jump in for the RP onto Yuma and uh, Mind Control, but he actually gets caught out. Moonlight, he's actually going to be RP, uh, sorry, ruptured at back. the moment, so he's got to chill out a little bit, but here comes Orica. Here comes the big boy. you got to be cautious here as they jump on top of him and just try to get the Science off straight out of the back with the Curse of Avernus, but Yuma, very, very quick. Going to run away on the Bloodseeker. And GH is going to throw some spells over the way of Orica as well. Are we able to re request the uh, replays? I want a replay of Undying using Tombstone, please. Of that previous fight. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to wait to say what I'm going to say just in case the replay comes. But if there is ever a time I want to see one, it's right now. <laughs> Okie dokie. If it doesn't come, that's fine. It's on me. I'll explain no it. One My golly know. gosh, it was... <sighs> I think Yuma is very happy. Uh, he survived there. Either way, Ivy, they are. Moonlight Shadowed now. Oh, Across the map. Now. <laughs> there we go. Uh, they're Any still drops? looking. Ivy are just Slow struggling match. to connect the dots. Radiance courier has been killed. Yeah, yeah, they are. They feel strong, but, you know, it's, it's annoying. It's like, you're really strong. You, you're ready to hit your personal best at the gym, but there's no weights anywhere. They've just all disappeared. Ivy, they've got nothing to bench. Truly a crushing feeling. Which I'm sure we all know. Let's just win for the... Oh, oh yes. Let's oh, go. Oh, you got it. Nice. All right, all right. All right. So the, the reason why it's awkward... Oh, it's already started. So basically, the Undying, yeah. he clicked into the Tombstone instantly. So he walks up the high ground with Undying, Flesh Golem. Wants to punch slow the Bloodseeker, which probably would have netted the kill. And instantly scooped himself inside the tomb rather than yeah. doing anything else. <laughs> and he got stuck in there. So that highlight, beautiful stuff, showcasing his... Uh, absence from yeah. the fight due to his misclick it was uh very unfortunate and it, i guess i feel like you can be a little bit mentally broken in this game being on dying because you just faced an ember for like 33 minutes of the game it's it's kind of like oh, i'm just i i just want it to be over boys i'll, fr I'll throw two it down to him so i'll throw pavis in the mix and we'll see what happens well i'll try i'll try i'll do my best uh impact the game in some way. Uh, Yuma, by the way, has picked up this uh, Magnum Scepter immediately after the Mjolnir and the BKB, which I love. 
I love this. Hi, Tim. <laughs> yeah, it, good item. It allows you to be tanky and with the barrier, but also just be chaotic in the fight. You're throwing Lead around additional that. AOE damage, and yeah, that's that's the main thing. Like Yuma's mindset in this game should be get into the middle of the fight. Even worst case, you tank up an RP. These melee heroes getting on top of you. Are you gonna die? Probably not. So it's been a lot yeah, of fun I mean, in this game. The uh, one of the biggest aspects of um, of Blood Mist is the passive healing from the fifty percent. What was uh, Mikey's actually jumped in super hard here. He's been fun stuff pretty heavily, but he's not gonna die. RP does Yuma. come down though, but not onto him. It's onto the Bloodseeker. That rupture. They're screwing him back into the base. Rupture is out, but. What What's it going to do? And the Doom out onto the Abaddon right now. They know he doesn't have another life, so Yuma is actually going to be able to escape. Can they get away? Well, my control? This is deep, my friend. I mean, they can oh no, they catch him out with the Remnant. It's just not actually going to die. He's going to TP himself. Wait, no, they actually catch him out with the uh, Soul Rip. Unbelievable. All right. Uh, my control second, dies. That's all that they happens. They were fractions away from Yuma dying. Mikey dying, plus MC. Like, if all three cores die there, the leap that they accrued just would disappear. I mean, Mikey, he, he's had a splendid game. He's 13 0 and 6. He's got every item he could ever want. But maybe that was a dive too deep. But, like, of course, he didn't bite them in the ass this time around, but they need to be careful. Roshan yeah, will yeah. respawn in 40 seconds' time. All spells will be available pretty much for both teams. Mag RP is on Kano for a minute, but. Enigma, they are the, the the ones in the lead right now, but you need to respect it. I mean, they they can surprise you. Nullifier is kind of pretty much the, the key here. I'd like to see maybe a basher or something on this uh, Baden. I think that's the maybe downside with this build he's gone for with a harpoon. He has a lot of soft control with silences, but none of that. You're here. You're in my territory. You're in my domain. I'm gonna kill you off. And against Bloodseekers and Embers, yeah. it could help, but. Currently lacking that that nice little bit of CC. I guess uh, Mixer's really got a, his work cut out. Got to RP everything. Yeah, just RP everything, bro. That's a that's a reliable strategy. He did it in the last game, so I I can see the logic there. Roshan's uh, now yeah. available. Not incorrect. Yeah, Ivy on it uh, like a flash. Enigma, they're ready this time. They're smoked up, but potentially are they too slow? Maybe if someone from Ivy throws out their body and tanks a spell or two, it could buy enough time. Yeah, Rue is looking to be exactly that. Mirana jumping around, just trying to be a distraction. Look at this, beautifully done as the Aegis does go the way of Moonlight. And Rue still running them around, will eventually die, but a hero salute for Rue as he goes down in style. And Roshan just being the savior for Ivy. Whoever's making these calls, game, like game one, game two, it's the main reason they're able to keep it in here and keep that potential comeback energy in the roster the first one nice little sweep away the second one they just had it time beautifully positioned accordingly and as soon as it spawned boom you're hitting it you're forcing nigma to have to then bring everyone together hit the smoke button run down the lane mixer needs to be careful uh yeah certainly does gets a big old doom donked on his head and uh Yuma is following up as well well wow, first down the rupture even okay all right well he got him. <laughs> just wants a kill. He just wants to really feel like he's contributed. It's his first, like, second kill in the game. 37 minutes in. Now, you know what it's about? You get the kill and uh, you get the overheal. You get maximum overheal from the Blood Mist. That's a huge barrier, my friends. That is true. He is barriered up right now. So barriered. But also, Voice Spirit has the best barrier in the game, and that's called a second life. Uh, Enigma uh, wishes they had one. Yep, technically he has a uh, 2,500 HP barrier. Jump in, Abaddon. He's got a, he had a barrier. It's gone now. And he's actually trying to turn around. Yeah, it's bloody. This is, this is aggressive. I and mean, he does have himself that burrow time available. Should he want to pop that one out as Yuma just splatters himself into blood with blood mist. Yeah, gonna cancel yeah. that one out as they move forward. Yeah, Jin, Vincenzo, probably gonna be the target here. Me, he's broken up and gonna get taken down. Nullifier out upon him. And Nullifier is doing big work this game. As uh, Nygma continue to uh, increase the stranglehold on the side of Ivy. Of course, they still don't have that Aegis to play with. In fact, it's still in the hands of the Void Spirit. Which means he can run in and make plays like this. Completely risk-free. And now they disengage. 
I think for Enigma at least, there is going to be that potential communication within the team. Like guys, even if the game gets dicey, Doom just needs 25. Get the Doom Applies Break talent. I put it on the Abaddon and now he can't press his ultimate whilst in Doom. It won't, it won't even press his it auto trigger, right? So. Whoa, really? Mike, he's gonna care. get more down. Oh, they actually catch him though. The RP comes out as well. No more global oh, sides coming out this time from Kuro. And that is gonna be the end of the godlike streak from Mikey. 20, 38 minutes into the game, but there it is, his first death. 16, zero and six at 38 minutes, crushing the game. His aggression has been the reason why he's been able to put his teams in such a position, but yeah. When you when you go for the seventeenth time against Ivy, you're gonna <laughs> get hit by the spells. That's what they all say always say about this team. Catch them sixteen times, fair enough. Go for seventeen and you're just pushing it. I mean it's just Actually, silly, you know what? Me. You know what? That was Kuro's fault. Kuro, Kuro didn't ulti for him. Every other time he saved him, that time he didn't. Or well, maybe he was like at thirty nine minutes, mate, you should be farmed enough to be able to survive these initiations. Yeah. <laughs> Being six in and oh Mr. Core. No, I get it. With it's, the it's speed like in when... which you play on Ember, it's like it's easy to have that miscommunication, but it's only it's like yeah. a two second window, right? And easily can pass that, yeah. Without RP to come out. It's kinda like when you're being taught to ride a bike and your your dad's always there to to keep you upright. Or in my case my mum. And then eventually they let go and you go oh my god i'm doing it by myself except he didn't do it by himself he fell and uh, now they're taking racks so this is pretty pretty big downward spiral for enigma first lane of barracks going to ivy once again and echoes of game one coming back to haunt us maybe oh hold on finish the job there we go job's done now look over towards gh gh is getting absolutely obliterated here he's got the yours out onto himself but moonlight's ready for him on the crash down now, in the middle of the fight, Odega is first life has gone with that borrowed time, and they can now get done with the real thing. And they'll look over towards the Void Spirit now as well. The Global Science doing some work, but actually he's going to turn back around and kill off Yuma. And there's his first life gone, but the fact he managed to kill Yuma on his way out already makes this worthwhile. It just depends if he can get out once again. Moves across, jumps over the gate, but yeah, unfortunately, you just don't win this race. Mikey, he's got four more remnants to go, so Moonlight, you can, you can play all you like, you can Astral all you like, but eventually... The inevitable will happen, and Mikey will run him down. He has another one to spell, so this route isn't going to be too effective. Another yeah, step that's in true. one. Another step. Oh, Fair play. He was juking, he was driving, he was trying his sweet best. But yeah, the fact that Ivy get the first racks in this game, Enigma truly are presenting us one of the more perplexing series in this uh, DPC <laughs> so far. You know, scratching our noggins at this one. It's, um, yeah, wild. Mentanto, Hello. down the tombstone. I've seen this before. I, I, yeah. He got doomed last time he did this. You can jump inside the tombstone when you're doomed though, right? Yes, the tombstone has its own independent like collection spell, basically. Yeah. But if you Rad. select it on the tombstone, it spins. And if you select it on the undying, it's like instant. So, it, so there's like a marginal, it's very slight difference, but it's like whimsically different. <laughs> That's your word of the day, isn't it? Bro, I said honestly, whimsical. I know, it's fine. It's all good. The heat. Moving on. I like it. Thank you. I've said whimsical twice today, right? Once in game one, once in game two, no? Or have I said it more? Yeah, but it's not one of those words where you just kind of expect to hear it, you know? Oh, uh, that's true. It's just a nice word. It's because I've said, I've said casual, and like I've, I've tried to popularize the word casual in drafts and stuff. But like, it's a casual silencer, doesn't reveal much, you know, casual bane. And now I'm hearing people say it more, so I'm happy that's a thing. And now Whimsical, it's like... And now your next one is when you got to spread yeah, exactly. the brain might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Wow, wait. Look at all these shields on Mikey. Jesus. 1,700. This is the little gold buff. And the, like, the, the fact that when they program the shield thing, they're like, oh, guys, don't forget that there's going to be potentially like multiple shields on heroes. Oh. It's good, good call. I like it's it. Very good call. I, I prefer them if they stacked on top of each other like a pyramid, though. And then you just have people running around with big old pyramids on their heads. That's and you're, cool. you're brand new to Dota. You look at Ember Spirit with like 14 <laughs> different bars on him. It's like, okay, so <laughs> yeah, which one yeah, will like... kill him? It's like, oh. wait, what? I've got to go for the yellow bar, then the, the, the green bar, and the... Yeah. Too much and this is why people go to League. They're just, it's, they, they need whoa, 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 easier experience. Sorry, so simmer down, man. Simmer down, all right? <laughs> Our game is way better. Yeah, of course. No but, comparison. You know, only only big brain Giga Chads can play Dota. Yeah, that's true. Will Ivy be able to be big brain giga chance to get themselves back into this game? 
Well, there's the self doom on mind control there as he gets on top of the bat and he needs to keep up, but will be able to with relative ease. And now, well, it turns around. Actually, lost a target here. Exotic has been able to get out the other side and get off that ultimate. That's not great. But in the middle of the fight, they've caught out Mikey. Can they do the damage, though? It doesn't seem like they can with the Global Science to catch him out. And now Otika's going to fall as well. Oh, dearie me, Nygma. They are taking control of this game. And then some Moonlight still trying to play around this one. He's got a cheese to gobble on up there and try and get himself out of danger. But the TP's coming, but it's not going to be enough. The root is there, and they could bring down the Void Spirit as well. Buyback's available on the Abaddon and on the Magnus, but not on the Void Spirit at the moment. He needs 170 gold. Yeah, too many things had to go right there for Ivy to win that fight. Doom, he had 25 talent, he had the Ag, so Abaddon instantly knew, I need to disengage from this. He utilized yeah. the Moonlight Shadow quite nicely to distance himself, but because of that just brief moment of walking away from the team and the Doom, the RP wasn't an instant, Mikey's dead. He was able to survive and uh, not get two deaths in the game. So, Ivy, nice attempt at the recovery, but Nygma just way too strong. MC really wants yeah. to take this game to a game three. He's had a pretty Finally, a fight which actually reflects the gold difference, right? Like, finally, yeah, it looks like Nygma are actually 20k gold ahead. Yeah. So many small things in that fight just felt good for Nygma. Like, the war stomps from MC, the fact that Mikey put himself in such a position that baited Ivy to think they could kill him off. Kuroki face slamming his head into the keyboard to get that global pumping. All right, but Ivy, you know, they're, they're, they don't want to get mega you know, they're, they're not Nygma. <laughs> they're going to buy back to stop Mega Creeps coming in. Into the Tombstone we go, so that's going to keep him alive, but uh, look who's back in. Mind Control, he's trying to Otika. Otika's just gone. In the blink of an eye, your carry is down, and Ivy, it's looking incredibly grim for them now. Marana dies, does have the buyback, comes back into it, but Nygma, what is it call? You no longer have another Doom to work with here, so it might be time to just back away, but what are they going to do? Yeah, and they're not going to push this too hard. But man, that's a lot of buys. Oh, Mikey and Moonlight playing around with each other. Another step, but now he's out. And a ball, a refresher orb just picked up from the Doom. He pops it. He, he's coming back into the fight. They're not going to know about it. And now they get caught out. Where did another Doom come from? Beautiful little play there. He did that under the cover of smoke, by the way. So they had no chance of knowing about a second Doom. Very, very cute from Mind Control here. There is a buyback on the Magnus, though, but when's he going to use it? His teammates are dying. His teammates are dead. He buys back. He RPs. His skewers back. There's a BKP out on the Doom. He's going to be absolutely fine. Mike is going to be able to jump back across with his remnant. Sure, they'll catch out Yuma, but it feels like a little bit too little at the moment. And a buyback from Yuma as well should secure this game for the side of Nygma. No, man, we're going to a game three. This. These games have just been presenting us with all the quirks of Dota and I'm happy we're going to a game three. I think both teams do deserve that final shot to, to get the series.